Welcome to the Virtual Millionaire Show, the ultimate destination for all things real estate investing. I'm your host, Michael McDonald, a real estate investor based out of Las Vegas. And I am on a mission to help you scale your real estate business. This podcast is designed to educate, motivate, and inspire you on your journey to becoming a virtual millionaire in the world of real estate. We bring to you experts from successful owners across the country who share actionable advice that you can implement immediately. Our goal is to equip you with the knowledge and tools needed to launch and grow your real estate investing business, paving the way for financial success. Before we dive into today's episode, I wanted to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Property Pros Marketing. Property Pros Marketing drives motivated seller leads directly to you through digital marketing. Check them out at propertyprosmarketing.com. Now, let's get started with another episode of The Virtual Millionaire Show. All right. Today, I'm with Paul DeCampo. What is up, man? How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate of course. It. Of course, man. Well, I think today's uh, topic is going to be super impactful for, for folks in the real estate business um, because you you help a lot of investors with um, follow up, right? But before we get into that, right, we're going to be doing some screen sharing, keeping this a little bit interactive today for the folks who are on YouTube. But um, for those who don't know you, man, can you kind of catch them up to speed who you are and how you got your start in real estate? Yeah, absolutely. So it was about, you know, I'll try to make it a, a TLDR version of this, but um, how I got into copy, I mean, I started off as an investor. 2016 around that time, um, family with kids, uh, well, still, still have a, a family with kids, still married. And at that time I was working as a pipeline welder and, and crew foreman. I did that up until 2020, 2021. And, uh, didn't know a thing about marketing or sales and, uh, jumped into the world of bigger pockets, that rabbit hole, learned about direct mail, sent a lot of money out for direct mail. Didn't know what I was doing. Uh, was door knocking the terrible neighborhoods of Pomona, door knocking uh, heirs, executor uh, houses for probates, um, all that stuff. And uh, I, I remember sitting in my car to do follow up. I was, you know, I had, had a, you know, I have, I had Podio at the time. You know, that, that's all there was back then was Podio. Uh, I was using other people's drip sequences, and you know, I was following up, and I'd have my list of different potential leads to follow up with that said they're on the fence and I'd sit there I'd see Mr. Joe, Miss Sally there and go, okay, well, let me, you know, I talked to her two weeks ago. Let me just put a manual task to follow up in another two weeks. And then, you know, I feel like she's not going to sell anytime soon. Let me go ahead and move that manual task over for another month or so. Uh, and then that didn't really work out. <laughs> Obviously it didn't really work out very well at that time. And I was trying to wholesale and flip houses and, and, uh, so I, I dove into, uh, dove into the world of marketing sales. I realized I needed to learn this stuff. I need to learn, especially sales, but that, that kind of took me in a rabbit hole of copy, uh, like accident kind of fell into it. Um, Trevor mock over at investor care was like my first client and, um, kind of just jumped into it and learned about it. it dope, um, swallowed any kind of book I, I can find on it, any kind of information. Um, and I just started enjoying the whole process of it and, and actually became better and better at it, you know, getting 1% better every day. So it's, I was actually, I remember sitting, uh, sitting down and writing every single day, handwriting and copying certain um, ads you're supposed to as like a young copywriter. Um, so that then from there, it's kind of a mishmash of, of, of different events, but I also pivoted into uh, mobile home flipping. So I was finding those deals pretty easily. Um, and I was flipping those and, and, uh, doing what's called Lonnie deals. So doing the note and origination, selling them on payments, um, did the same thing with land, started a, a little land flipping volume business as well, uh, uh, in Southern California. Um, and I was slowly adding what I was learning about copy, um, and marketing into, into this doing, doing more, more follow-up marketing on the email side of things. Um, and then uh, fast forward to 2020, I'm already picking up uh, clients for this. Uh, when I say clients, I mean like coaches, 
um, vendors, uh, vendors in the real estate world, software, um, print shops, things like that, and doing little projects for them. I remember doing um, a direct mail package for uh, for a big land developer out here in Southern California. They were selling like hotel and large, multi, like 400 unit plus uh, multifamily projects in Vegas. And they're selling it via direct mail. And so I was doing, I was a copywriter putting together the packages. And so uh, I was working with um, Dan Kennedy's um, uh, mail guy too, Craig Simpson, which was, was pretty cool and fun. And so um, I, 2020, about 2020, 2021, I quit my, my W2 went fully into copywriting because I just, it was the fastest route for me to quit my job, my job, uh, rather than building, building a business. So I was just doing freelancing and I did it from one day to the next. Um, and what long story short, then I developed, uh, what's called Omnidrip. So this is the fun part for investors. This is where I directly help, help investors. I started, um, seeing that a lot of investors are struggling with the follow-up marketing. So they, they stick with the cliche of, Hey, it takes seven to 10, 10 touches to convert a deal, right? Um, the problem with that cliche is that that cliche is only meant for cold, gener cold lead generation. The reality is when it comes to like long-term leads, it takes a lot more touches. I have a case study where I show about uh, 70 to 100 touches to actually convert a lead over. I think we, we share some mutual friends like uh, and I remember you um, commenting on social media with, I think it was Adam or, um, or, or, or Scott or something like that, showing the touches that it took to convert a lead over. And it was like 189 touches. So a touch is a text message, an email, a call attempt, voicemail left, um, and um, direct mail sent, follow-up mail sent. And you can even, you can even uh, expand those touches to website visits as well if, if, if your data is capturing that. But anyway, the amount of touches it takes, uh, that is typical for any industry. Like I, I know I have a friend who sells copywriting courses. Um, it takes them on average to sell a little tiny $200 product. It takes them 150 emails to actually on average to convert somebody to buy it. So th the whole seven to 10 touches to get somebody to convert, that's only to, to get them to raise their hand to an interest of what you're doing. Uh, then afterwards, just for the average consumer, it's going to take a lot more touches because especially for a seller, you have these sellers that they're just on the fence, whatever's happening. Um, you're going to get this a lot where you have ghosted leads. Uh, that happens all the time. People stop, go, just stop responding to what you have. Um, that's nothing personal to you or your business. That's just, they have other fires to put out whatever pot that, you know, whatever initial emotion they had to read, to say yes to, to your, your, your direct mail, to your, to your PPC, whatever it is, um, that emotion is gone. Now they have something else that's, they have a, a new pot that's boiling over. Um, they have a new fire to put out. So your cash offer, your, your doing business with you is on the back burner until they're ready. Um, so, so in the meantime, what are you actually saying to them? Are you just relying on timing and, and good luck that your one message are you, that says, are you still interested in selling is going to land in the right time with them? Rather, so I, I develop a system that we keep marketing, keep marketing with value, benefits, driving them, driving them over to the website, not being an annoying pest asking, are you still interested in selling over and over again? Just following uh, up. Yeah, right. Hey, just checking in, just check, just following up with you, right? Those those in, those messages, they're, they're great. You got to use them. Direct questions are great. But I mean, 70 times, if you, if you look on average, how many touches it takes, even if it's 50 times, even if it's 20 times, you're going to say that over and over again, you know, that becomes, that's not even a marketing message. It's just a, a self-serving message. Um, so we want to send over value, build credibility, build up your, that you're an authority figure, give reasons why to work with you. Um, we have all kinds of things to say um, to investor. We just have to you know, package it up and, and put into, into different emails and text messages. So, so good, man. Well, I appreciate, uh, the, the intro and kind of explaining the behind the scenes of, of this. And one thing that I want listeners to really take away and understand is I was in your shoes with Podio, right? I, I was the guy doing the task, uh, <laughs> man, I got to carve out three hours a day just to follow up with these people because I didn't have an automated system. And when I did follow up, it was lazy. Like it was just following up, right? It was not the crafted message. And until I fully started to dive into the world of 
marketing and the psychology of copy, um, it really just blew my mind. And, and I, I experienced this firsthand after we talked the first time because we had we have a drip in our business. And I cannot tell you how many times we spend tens of thousands of dollars a month on marketing and a lead comes in. They say, hey, I want a cash offer. The urgency is fast. Yes, my team calls them within minutes. They don't answer. Now what, right? We were, we were you were using a message and it just wasn't it wasn't registering with people like they it was just another message that came across their screen right so these people are busy and i tweaked the message and it started getting people's attention and so right there i think it's it, it's a combination of the messaging but the psychology behind the messaging that really gets people to either call action and take initiative on that response or they'll just blow it off, but we can't just count on one, which is why you obviously exist, right? For your service of one message and expect them to respond because people, people are busy. And so it was like an aha for me. I'm like, guys, use this message instead. It's, it's simpler, it's less wordy and it, and it gets people's attention. And so, um, what you do is you help, you come in, take a look at the, the, the business, right? And you help people build out this sequence to 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 cater to somebody over a long term not just uh a week or two right because we know that it's going to take a lot longer to get a hold of people right yeah yeah there's a lot you said there that impact a lot of the different nuggets there uh the the first one i would say that we build out multiple sequences so um because and um let me try to unpack this here if, if I can share my screen, I, I think probably be a good time to, to share it. So perfect. I will get yeah. you access to share your screen there. And, and really what I'm hearing you say is it, it's, it's a, not a one size fits all, right? So you have different messaging for different situations, right? Yeah. Ex yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm not so much situation, so I'm not, so I'm not a situational, um, I don't build out situational drips except for a couple, couple, not, and I'll explain why, but it's more of event based drips because if you're, you're looking right now on my screen, I'm going to try to try to blow this up here. Can you see this? All right. Yeah, I can see it perfectly. And so okay, here yeah, we go. if you guys want to see what, what we're seeing here, uh, you'll want to check out the YouTube version of this video here. So how when i when i come in regardless of the industry that it is it doesn't have to be real estate it can be anything really um the first thing i'm going to go do is find out what their pipeline is like and i call it pipeline it's kind of like you know relevant i was a pipeline welder and then we what you're looking at are different like they're called gate valves and they're um so so i come in and i look at what's what's the flow of um of a lead coming coming into their system and out, out the end, what does it look like? And what are the, the different gates? So I want to define those different gates. And then I want to define the different quote leaks that happen. So in a normal uh, acquisition business, you're going to have these four gates here. When a lead comes in, when a lead says yes to whatever you're, you're offering. So they say yes. And the first thing you have to do is get them, get them over to an appointment. And by the way, before I, I want to mention this before, for, before I forget, this is, really important. Um, I think a lot of people, if you understand this, especially if you're new, if you understand that, that getting a deal is just a flow of, of different, um, gates or different stages, you have to pass a lead through, it becomes a lot easier when you're doing lead generation emotionally, because I, I remember cold calling and I remember reading on forums of people struggling with, with cold calling. And they're like, the, the, the first reaction is I can't find a deal while I'm cold calling. Well, that's the, that is the raw mentality because any type of lead generation, you're not, you're not looking for deals. You're the, the, the only thing you're doing is you're trying to look for a lead an engaged lead. I should say you're looking for a seller, somebody who actually is going to sell. That's like the first sale quote sale. We're trying to make whenever we do lead generation is just find a seller, go through the, the haystack and find that one needle. And now we can do something with that needle. Now we can put them through our, you know, manu quote factory, our manufacturing process, put them down our pipeline until finally it is a deal. So going back to this, very first thing is an appointment. The next thing is going to be offer made that goes through that, 
that quote gateway contract signed and deal closed. And I have a, a last and final one, which is not a gateway, but get a referral, a referral and a review. So I, that's how I understand it in a, in an acquisition business. These are the four little gateways we have to go through, but then there's, there are little, um, leaks, uh, quote leaks that happen in between all that. So, uh, appointment stage, they miss the appointment or before the appointment stage, they say they're not ready yet. So you haven't even booked them a cash offer. Um, so all these, there's a lot more, we have 20 and let me exit this out and show you. Um, so this is like if, whenever somebody subscribes to my, um, to my email list at, uh, REI Omnidrip.com, they'll get this list of sequences here. And it's about, it's, it shows 20 foundational ones, but I've, we got like 25 total, but the, if, all follows a pipe, the same pipeline of every event that can happen. The reason why I do this, I'm going to stop sharing right now so they can, so they can see my face, my pretty mug here instead. So <laughs> the reason why I do this is because um, if you just have one bucket where, and this is, this is a typical follow-up that people have, they have one bucket. It's their no contact bucket. Okay. Nobody's responded or they haven't replied back. Let's just throw them into that bucket. So in that bucket, you now have, somebody who hasn't gotten an offer, you have a landlord, you have a, a, a vacant house lead, you have owner occupant, you have somebody who has gotten an offer, you have somebody who signed with somebody else. So you have all these different situations in your pipeline. And now you're forced to only say generic messages, right? You can't, you have no call to action for, for your, your marketing messages. It's, it's just, Hey, you, know, you have no direct call to action because if I have, if, if somebody's in a bucket, before the appointment is made. They haven't, they haven't booked an appointment yet. You haven't been given an offer. Well, that's my next thing. I now, now I have a concrete like call to action. Say, Hey, you want to at least try our cash offer. You want to at least see our cash offer. Right. I don't use the word, by the way, on a side note, I don't use the word cash that much in these sequences just for anybody who's like, just got 10 DLC approved. Yeah. We want to make sure that they, you know, the stuff is, is going through, but, um, but in your case, we, uh, you now have a, uh, the next thing, right? In sales and marketing, there's always like, what's next? What's what's the next thing, the next action they have to take? Well, now I know if they haven't gotten the appointment, that's the next action. Um, same with with problems and pain points. Now, so if I if I know they're a landlord, if I know they're a vacant house lead or owner occupant, because I I split some of these sequences up into those three, I can now leverage those specific problems and, and solutions for that person. Um, so, so just for people, like, what's the point of doing that? Like, is that is, do, do they feel more heard, like from a psychological perspective? Do you see more engagement if they're speaking, you're speaking their language about their situation versus maybe a generic one? Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. So, it, with that, I can, um, le when I leverage the specific problem, because a cash offer means anything, it can, it can really mean a whole mess of things. I remember when I first started struggling. Um, when I was on that, that making those follow up calls, I had an old school investor pull me aside and, and he had me write down a uh, hundred different ways that I benefit uh, a seller. I think I came up with about 50 of them, but the point of it was, it, was it, it did two things for me. One, it gave me confidence and that I actually um, offer value to a seller. And the second, now it later on today, it's actually looking back, it's, it was fodder for this type of this, these type of marketing messages, because a cash offer, again, we take for granted that we, that the other person is going to understand what it means. Um, and they might, but they need a reminding of it. They need constant reminding of the main thing that, um, that a cash offer is going to bring to them, the main value and solution that a cash offer is going to bring to them. Um, so we, we tend to, in a marketing message, investors tend to just throw up every feature and benefit that a cash offer brings to the table. You've seen those emails and those letters like we do this this is and list off 10 different things and those things get kind of glazed over it's, it's a lot to read through and pick through but rather when we um so some of the the better direct mail that I, uh that we've seen um because i've done work for for direct mail shops is we've we pinpoint one to two benefits to talk about to to really be um uh, to really be the, 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 the highlight of that marketing message, just one to two, rather than spitting, spitballing everything we can in there, we just pick one to two. And then if, especially if it's a sequence, if it's a, if it's a sequence of mailers 
branded mailers, we can then have set six to seven different um, different angles we have in each in each postcard, each letter. Um, does that make sense? So it's a, what, what resonates. Like, what are those two things that that you say resonate? Because as I think about, it, I'm like, yeah, my message to my team is that hey, you get paid based on the amount of value that you provide, right? So if you're not providing any value, you're not going to make as much money. So um, what are two things that that really hit for these these homeowners? Well, that that depends on it, it, well that that depends on the um, the market uh, the timing of the market I should say and and it depends on the actual if, you know if it's a landlord uh, vacant house lead and, and everything but the, gotcha. the reason why that works the the reason why that works is if you think about a sales call the best sales calls are discovery calls where we when you're one to one with the person you're you're digging to to what their actual their their actual problem is. And then that becomes the center point. It's like, okay, well, let's let's bring that up. Let's 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 uh, Jim Camp. Um, I love Jim Camp's book. Start with no. Um, Chris Voss learned learned a little bit from from Jim Camp, but he talks about this where the only way you can uh, the only way some people makes make a decision is vision. They have to have vision of the problem and the vision of the solution. So they have to have it in their head. They have to actually have the vision of the problem and the solution, and and so. The only way to bring to the only way to have for them to have that is you have to bring it up in, in different ways. So in sales, if I if I just have a, a dog and pony show, all my the bells and whistles that I do, like if somebody goes in a sales call with me with audio drip, and I just have a PowerPoint slide about this is what we do, this is what we do. Um, that has and I've tested this has such a low conversion rate as opposed to no PowerPoint deck, no no slide deck, and dig into what's going on with them. And then offer, okay, yeah, this is how we can, uh, we can, we have a solution for that. Um, so how does that translate to marketing? Well, marketing has the disadvantage that I can't go face to face. So I have to really narrow down on the top benefits and features for the overall market. So when it comes to direct mail, so for example, like, let me answer your, your that question, go back, going back to your question, when it comes to direct mail, two years, three years ago, maybe even four years ago, a uh, cash offer wasn't that, um, wasn't that valued. It wasn't because well, everybody was on the MLS, you, you list your house and you'll get three, four, five different cash offers. Uh, so it wasn't, it was more of a commodity. So if you wrote in your marketing messages that cash offer, you, you just, you know, your the highlight was cash offer, cash offer, cash offer. It wasn't as responsive as say you're highlighting something else like um, no, no realtor fees. Right. So that, 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 that brings more attention because like it, it's more of a curiosity effect of, okay, no realtor fees, um, opposed to the cash offer, which kind of gets glazed over because everybody's offering a cash offer. Um, so, so market matters when it comes to choosing these different benefits and features. But the, the point is, is we can highlight one that is the strongest for any, for a particular market, particular segment. Uh, and with, with follow-up, we have, we have the beauty of having, multiple little marketing messages so when, when i'm when we create these follow-up messages we're not just picking one or two i'm picking a dozen because i have a dozen messages or you know we have 100 messages to choose from so each each uh, text message there's one particular benefit or feature inside that text message yeah i really like what you said about like keeping it simple for these folks who are reading these messages and the first thing i could think about when you, you know, clarify the messaging piece of it was hearing one of my sales guys on the phone with the seller and just like, just word vomiting, saying way too much. And what I mean by that is like, we can do this, 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 this. And all of a sudden, like you can just, without even seeing them, you can just tell that their eyes just glazed over. They lost interest. They're overwhelmed. And now guess what? They, they can't make a decision. And so what I'm hearing is like, you're, you're really breaking this up into segments to where they know like what to expect. Like they know the value that you're going to provide. So it gives them the confidence to be able to call to action, click call back, text back, click on your emails, you know, whatever the case may be. So I I really like that. I'm going to throw a curveball at you, Paul, because, um, as we both know, technology has advanced and, you know, there's copywriting, um, AI copywriting, 
there are bots, right, that are now communicating with with people, and there's a lot of technology. So, like, what do you think about that, and how does it affect like what what you're currently doing? Does does it can it compete with what what you're doing, or can you kind of speak to that? Yeah, I mean, I yeah. I, I, I guess you have to take my word for it when I when I say I haven't seen it compete yet with me, uh, because uh, AI, especially what, what's available right now, is ChatGPT and the Google version. Uh, it, ta- it does take an operator to use it. It's not. I have I have yet to see it work well where it's a one click solution. So you write one sentence and it yeah it produces something right. It does produce something, but regard what you're looking for, what, if it's, if it's any decent, I mean, I use, I, I use it, um, quite a bit for, um, for article creation, not for Omnidrip, but for, uh, in, in other ventures, we use it for article creation. Now the, the article creation, the only purpose of that article creation is for SEO ranking. The only purpose of getting that article to rank and get eyeballs on it is a pop-up ad. That's, that's like, whether, like, I, we don't care if it gets read. Like we don't care. And it's, and it's, it's okay. It might get read by the, by, um, by a certain segment of the market. Uh, but if I'm trying to create, like, I'll tell you for Omnidrip for like, so if people subscribe to my email list and they, and, and they, they're going to get, um, almost daily emails from me. So that's my follow-up. My follow-up is daily emails and for, for Omnidrip. I don't have AI write that. I only have AI yeah, touch that because it takes far too long for me to try even get something out of chat that you, even if, you know, people say, oh, you, all you have to do is paste what you've done in the past. Yes. You've done that, been there, done that. Um, but it takes far too long to actually get it decently right. Okay. To, to be my voice, my, the relationship I'm growing with my list, personality driven, et cetera, it takes, it takes far too long for me to do it right. When I could just write the thing and, in 30 minutes. Um, I'm really, I'm really happy. That was the way you answered this question because I, I do agree with you hundred percent that it's really hard for AI to know Paul's personality or Michael's personality or, um, not sound like a robot, right? Some of these, cause I've used chat GPT and, and some of these things that it spits out is just like ton of information, way too much. I'd never say it. Right. And so, um, on some of our drip campaigns, right? We, and this is not your drip campaign, just for the record, I need to talk to you about the drips, but with some of ours, like we've had sellers, I think they're just getting more adapted to the fact that AI and technology is communicating with them. And it didn't seem like it was, but they said, are you a robot? Like it, it they, cause it was like automated instant response and people are catching on, right? So that just makes it so much more important about needing to separate yourself and, and use something like what you're talking about here. Well, yeah. And uh, more so as, as time goes by, because chat does have its own voice. Like I, I can see it. You can see and you see it in the people who do use it in social media posts. It's like they it's the same type of style. Unlock the, the words are bigger than their dictionary or whatever the case right. may be. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, and even if you tell it, if you're like, oh, you just tell it and prompt. It. Yes. Yeah. You can tell it. You can tell it and prompt it to do all that. Right. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't work 100% no matter how much you time. Like I've told it and I, I, I've, I've attempted to, to do like, let's do, let's test this out compared to what I do. Let's write a long, t- like a long uh, style of drip sequences. And I, wrote out all these prompts and, and, uh, and then, and then it'll pop out something that's like, you know, it's just not at a, at a, at a gray level. It needs to be for text messaging. It's too long. Um, and then I'll say, Hey, do that at a fifth grade level. Okay. More casual, more conversational. And then it just sounds like way too corny. It's like, dude, like yeah. you, know, you know what I mean? Like, it's like yeah. nobody talks like that. And so, um, you know, and so I'm, I, you can sit, th- I'm sure somebody can figure it out. Right. I hired an, I hired an agent. So it's, it's a matter of like whether or not you accept that or not into your business. Okay. And um, I personally, a lot of the stuff it comes out with, I don't accept it. It's just not, it's um, it, it, it's, it flows. It doesn't talk like a normal person, the conversational um, it doesn't talk the way I want. Doesn't, doesn't want, it doesn't have concise brief. It, so I hired an AI guy to write a book for me. 
I just, I wanted to test myself out. I really want to test if I'm, am I missing the boat here? Cause everybody talks about how great this is. We're going into a rabbit hole here, I know. <laughs> but, um, I wanted to test this out cause everybody's raging about it. So I'm like, okay, let me hire the best AI guy to write me a book on this or not, or uh, write, write a book for, uh, for, for me on follow-up marketing. So hired him, paid him and gave him, did, went through a survey. Um, you know, next two days he had it. So great guy. I am not, nothing, nothing bad with the guy, but the book is okay. You know, if you want to get content out there, it's okay, but I'm not going to publish it in my name because it's just has it's far from what I would say, far from what just sounds normal to me. Um, it's not educational. Any, it, it is educational. I shouldn't say that, but it's, it's not, yeah. It's not my voice at all. Um, I, I had I had the same experience, except for I didn't pay somebody to do it. I just used Chat GPT to write an ebook because I wanted to have an ebook for you know people to hear my story, but also to provide value. And there's a lot of information about real estate online, but like it was really wordy and it didn't sound like me. So like I see exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. You just so, have to, yeah, personality wise. Going back to texting and what works best, what I've seen, because um, if you get chat to try to do it, it becomes this long, wor wordy type of text message. Text messages, for how we see it and how we, we see working best, is they're short, bite sized little marketing messages. So I have a three part like formula for writing text messages. Usually it's three part. 90% of our text messages are, are, th are this three part formula. So one is the introduction. Uh, two is one benefit, one one feature. Um, so benefit feature being like, you know, leave all your unwanted things behind. That's that's a benefit. And then third is the the call to action, whether it be to, you know, you know check out our, our article, reply back, text back, call back, whatever it is, B book a call uh, with our count within our calendar link, whatever it is. So um, that's our tip. And I try to keep it really short, concise. Um, because again, I, and, and then I'm going through, and then we're going through the text message, the word or the, the, the message, eliminating anything that doesn't need to be there. Any words that don't need, need to be, might not be grammatically correct. And, you know, like, like journalists are probably scoff at it, or academics probably scoff at it and saying, this isn't, this isn't how you write. That's okay. Because I trying to get the thing read in one to two seconds, right? Let, less than, less than two seconds. That so attention that, span that we were talking about, you've got to get their attention quick, right? Right. So, and, and, you know, like, okay, I'm not, I'm not hitting them with the, with the marketing message that, or the benefit that, you know, maybe I'm saying, Hey, a reminder to that we buy with, with, with tenants in the house, right. That might not get that landlord that day, but maybe the next one talking about, uh, you know, the problems of repairing the house, that marketing message might hit them. So, so each, again, each text message, each email, each voicemail you leave, it's one opportunity to remind them of what, of, of how you work, how you can work with them, how you can solve their problem. Yeah. Again, um, face to face is always best, right? Like, you know, if you're going to leave a voicemail script and we, you know, part of our system is, is we do have tasks to call. We, I don't neglect those at all. Um, we have tasks to call and, and I'll, I'll put in there a voicemail like framework for the team to work off of, because I'm trying to help the team to one, one speed, speed to execute tasks, but, but also knowing what to do or say. And so if there's a, there's a, there's a, a framework for them to work off, there's introduction. It, my voicemail scripts are exact same framework, introduction, uh, benefit or feature and a call to action. So that's my framework. And I usually lay it out with them in their tasks and they can, um, they can see it right there. And then, and then I have part of the task is, Hey, manually text them and let them know that you just left a message. So in almost all my call tasks, it's three parts, call them. If there's no answer, leave a voicemail. Here's the, here's a framework to work off of, and then leave this copy and paste this text message, letting them know. And then usually that text message has a benefit or feature. Again, I'm just, just adding touches going back to what I said, 70 to 200 touches plus to, to, for these long-term leads to convert. Well, I've got, we got a lot of touches to, to rep through here. So, you know, we got to build value. We got to show them we're credible. We got to show. So I, so going back to that credible thing, I'm, you know, early on, I'm trying to front load uh, more engagement. 
So meaning getting them to the review site, if we have reviews, right, for that social group, um, getting them to our website, bring them back to our, um, read an article, build that authority that we're an expert, uh, bring them back to our website. If you're doing Facebook retargeting, that's another, another set of, of touches you can do, right? So um, trying to front load that engagement, that's, that's going to help with deliverability too in the long run. Awesome, man. Good stuff. And so for like somebody who may just be a killer at sales, right? They may be hearing this and thinking like, oh my gosh, Paul, like that sounds, that sounds like a, a lot of work, right? Well, <laughs> spoiler alert, it is a lot of work, right? To, to implement this. So that's why Paul created OmniDrip. And so uh, you definitely want to take advantage of grabbing, it looks like you have the REI omnidrip.com um, kind of a sample drip campaign, right? But, um, you know, talk to Paul, you know, see, see how he can help you. So for somebody who's listening, who, who may have a pretty good real estate business, but they don't have this thing dialed in, what does it look like to work with, with you and your service? Yeah. So, um, you know, they, they're going to call, call with me. I don't have a sales or anything. It's just me. Um, and, I'm, like I, I mentioned, I kind of give, give a sneak peek at what that sales call looks like, right? It's not a, a pony show because I give a lot of information before we get on the call. Um, so you can make a decision before we get on the call. I, I want you to have, make a decision before we actually get on the call. By the way, that is also part of OmniDrip sequences for investors is I have a, um, a pre-appointment sequence. And um, I mean, at, at a bare minimum, you know, we're, we're making sure that that you're reminding them of the of the appointment, right? So we so we have less uh, no shows, but you're also cutting down skepticism a little bit, right? With with uh, showing them articles, talking about your team if you have that in place, if you're about page, your company page if you have that in place. So anyway, um, so I so before appointment, I'm always trying to preload it before the appointment, trying to get more information out there to help them make a decision before they're actually on the call. Um, if they want to work with me, it, it's not. I mean. I was going to say it's not cheap, but it's it's. Uh, I, I've noticed that I, I've sold it at less than five hundred bucks <laughs> when I first started. Five hundred bucks, we get we do all the labor of doing that. We're not making any money off of that. Um, but I've noticed at that price point, people aren't that serious of using it. So we have been raising it as we add more features, we add more strategies, we add more things, we've been incrementally raising it. Um, so I can tell you this as far as price point, uh, one deal. Um, it'll pay for it 10 times over. So, um, so that's, uh, if they want to work with me, it takes about, um, you fill out a form, it's semi-custom. So meaning we actually build a profile for you. Um, with, if you're national, we make sure the messages, um, don't crack, don't clash with that. Uh, if you're local, we talk about that. If you're face-to-face -face appointments or virtual or a mix, whatever it is, however you work in your business, we make sure the message match that. Um, and then it takes about, uh, two weeks for us to get it all loaded in there. And afterwards there's, there's support. I'm always there to make sure the team is using it. They understand it. Um, we'll go through scenarios with leads to show, yeah, this leads a good one for this sequence. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it, look, uh, it looks like to work with me. So that's awesome. And guys, just so you know, Paul's worked with some of the top, um, you know, service providers, educators, etc. So like everybody knows who carrot.com is. So he's worked with Trevor mock um this guy knows what he's doing so definitely uh at least go to the website you know grab grab some drip talk to paul see if there's a mutual fit there and uh man i don't usually go this deep on this type of stuff but i absolutely love it and i know the people did too and they're gonna get a ton of value from this so thank you um uh, thank you for coming on and sharing your wisdom and um any last thoughts that you want to leave people with before we wrap this thing up? Uh, you know, I'd say that, yeah, I just posted on social media. I'm getting more into social media. I'm getting more. I've out. noticed that. Yeah. I've been very against it, uh, but I realized that's where all the cool kids hang out. So <laughs> I, I, I got to jump into if I want to be a cool kid. So um, I just posted about CRMs and, uh, you know, uh, this this ties into CRMs in my, uh, but you're either, if, if you're not following up but and you're running your business where it's it's based off of all the the hair on fire leads right now, like, and, and that's that's how a lot of investors operate. It's just leads come in, the ones they need to sell right now, the one call closes, that's where we sell everything else we forget. 
you can have a million dollar business with that. You, you probably can't. Um, so I'm not going to say everybody needs follow up. If you're okay with that, that's fine. But the 60, 80% of the, those leads, not those leads, but 60 to 80% of a, of a business's deals that actually do come from follow up. Think about how much money that you're actually leaving from that hard earned, uh, leads that you're paying for, right? All those leads that are coming in. You can in, implement a really simple uh, automation to follow. You need to follow up. But you're either following up manually or you're following up with some sort of automation. Me personally, Omnidrips, and people are going to think that if they subscribe and get on my and get on my email list, I have this like complicated drip sequence and all this what bells will actually don't. I actually have in Omnidrip, I have one welcome series. I have a, a way for them to get on a, like an SMS, a really small one week SMS drip sequence to demonstrate what I do. And then after they're done with that, they get a daily email from me. That's my follow up. So you're either you're either following up daily like I do, like and I which I enjoy do actually like doing that. And that's what I do. Or you have a long tailored tailored drip sequence um, that just oh, is always showing up, always showing up uh, more than the other guy, more than your competitors. If you can automate that, man, now you're now you're reaping all those leads that would have just been tossed in the trash. So yeah i just i ha dude that's great and I, I i laugh every time i i i see an investor get a no and then that's it they're totally discouraged like oh man i didn't get the deal that's it but i know from doing hundreds of deals right that that and that seller they they just had something else like they weren't ready to sell now so the power of follow-up is crucial like 60 to 80 percent that's that's insane. The amount of revenue that you can gather just from implementing these things that we're talking about here. Right. Right. And, so. and it, I mean, the, the word is follow up. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be automated, but again, like you're either manually doing it or you have a mixture of both. So, um, if you have lots of leads, you need, you're going to pull your hair out trying to do everything manual. You're gonna, it, things are going to lose to the track, uh, to the cracks. You're going to be like me sitting in my car, letting your emotions dictate when to follow up, you know, when a seller tells you, oh, follow up with me in three months. Um, yeah. Okay. You put that on your task list to follow up in three months, you find out they already sold. Right. So yep. you don't want the seller to dictate your system and your process. You want your system of follow up to be already, already there. So good, man. Well, Paul, it's been awesome, dude. I appreciate you coming on. Um, you, you're in California. You'll have to, you have to let me I'm know not, if you ever make it to Vegas. I'm in Idaho now. Oh, you moved. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if I'm in Vegas, I'll let, definitely let you know. So there's a Good. few people to, to visit. So you're one of them. Good stuff, man. Well, guys, go check out uh, reiomnidrip.com and um, yeah, see what Paul's got going on. But uh, really appreciate you coming on, man. And until the next one. Boom, another episode in the books. Thank you guys again for listening. Before I let you go, I just wanted to invite you to our Facebook group, Virtual Deal Makers. It's a perfect place to connect and collaborate with other like-minded real estate investors. And all you have to do is simply search Virtual Deal Makers on Facebook and apply to join the group. Thanks again to our sponsor, Property Pros Marketing, for supporting the show. Go ahead and check them out at propertyprosmarketing.com to elevate your lead generation. If you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and we greatly appreciate it. Share the podcast with your friends and stay tuned for more valuable insights. Visit thevirtualmillionaires.com to see everything about the episode and connect with me. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, keep crushing those deals and building your real estate empire. This is Michael McDonald signing off from The Virtual Millionaire Show.